Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Quicken, and today we are going to be completely redoing my bike paint job, adding upgrades to the bike, etc, etc. This is going to be my first time completely redoing this, but I hope to sprinkle in actual bike education into this video. So if you're watching it to learn something, you will learn something. So a little bit of history. I ride a retrospect single speed bike and I've had this bike for around seven years, maybe eight years. I, fun trivia, I actually got this bike like two weeks before John and I's first date. So this bike has been in my life for a long time and it is a great model bike. I recommend a retrospect to anyone who is riding a bike for the first time in a city, anything like that. It's a great commuter bike. So my bike has some crazy wear and tear just from being a city bike and a commuter bike for so many years. I have done some minor repairs on my bike as it's been needed, but I would say the frame needs to be completely stripped and repainted. Riding a bike, I live in Philadelphia, um, the roads are salted in the winter and that can corrode the bike frame if any part of the frame is exposed, so we need to repaint it. And I want to also add a basket, and my handle grips are getting kind of gummy, so it's just time to replace them. So today my inspiration for my bike is going to be the <laughs> EVA Model 1. And this is going to be my little reference card here. So if you don't know, and you don't need to know to enjoy this, this is from the anime Neon Genesis Evangelion. It is my favorite anime. And a little bit of history, it came out in 1995. And in my opinion, I think it's seen as a cult classic anime. And I think it's worth watching. Up until recently, it has been really difficult to watch this anime. Um, you had to either get the DVDs off eBay for hundreds of dollars or pirate it like some of us did. But recently, Netflix got the rights to it. I think it is a totally viable way to watch Neon Genesis. If you have watched it, today I'm going to be painting my bike to match the color scheme of EVA 1. You can see it's just been really just worn and torn up. And a lot of this happens from being parked downtown a bike will often park up right against you and damage like this happens. You can see other damage like this as well. I've never painted this bike, this is all factory, so these are just chips and stuff from wear and tear. And then back here is where I keep my U-lock. I don't have a little device for it so it just hangs. It was really creating like a hole in the paint right here so I put this tape there. And this is like my only reflector on my bike. My bike for the most part does not have any retrospect branding on it. I got this bike direct from the warehouse directly. So I was given the stickers to put on myself and I just chose not to, but I do have stickers on here that I have put on that I'll have to take off as well. Oh my God. The tires are new for the most part and I'm seeing now that my saddle has some damage. Hopefully I can fix that because my saddle is only like two years old and my friend Ryan put it on so I'd like to keep it. And I'm going to be keeping my pedals too. I replaced those a few years ago and I think that they're doing okay. If these little nubs were a little more worn, I would replace them, but I have a lot of BMX features on my bike, which I like and my grips are also BMX style, but they're getting kind of gummy. Like they're a little sticky, I think just from being outside and my hands being on them and stuff. My lights are a few years old. I think some new batteries would make them look great. And I also have this cable lock, which I'd like to keep somewhere else. That would be nice. Here's Hello Kitty, she works at McDonald's. I also have a front brake here, as you can see, and it has worn through the paint completely. See the back tire, the back wheel has it fully black, so I'd love to fix that as well, however hard or easy that would be. But yeah, this is the, this is what my bike looks like overall. I'm sad about taking off this Mark Cross sticker. It has been there forever, and I don't think I have a replacement, but my front 
basket will also go here, so maybe that'll make me feel better. So my old bike that I had before this, um, I had named Lil Red. And it was so fun to have a bike with like a name and personality. And although I love this bike so much, I've never given it a name. Uh, I'm excited to get started. And afterwards, give this a little personality, give it a name. Eva Unit 1. So my cable lock in the back is to lock my wheels to the frame of the, my bike and then my U-lock is to lock my bike frame to whatever I'm parking my bike to. I fully admit that this isn't the best cable lock seat situation on the market. My previous cable lock was like an, a, like a millimeter away from being cut through when I caught the last guy trying to steal my bike, so I'm glad I just have one. And this is my U-lock. I've only ever had to buy one U-lock my whole life, so invest in a good one and you'll never have to buy another one. I think this is the second to smallest size, other than the one that's like this big. I do recommend this one. It's kind of small. Learning how to use it can be frustrating. Sometimes you're trying to lock up something and you're like, damn, I wish this thing was like one more inch. But you want to get something small so someone can't put a car jack in between here and bust the U-lock open and steal your bike. But when you have a $200 bike, not many people eye it up anyway. Next, we're going to remove the stickers from my bike. This is just a little scraper razor and it lays flat like this so we can there is an attachment to like put this into, but you know. Almost salvageable. It is day two of sanding. I am just sanding off basically anything that is shiny. So anything that I see is shiny, I'm just alternating between these two grits of sand, soft block, that's nice. And then I have some wet sandpaper to use just to smooth everything off. I've gotten all the stickers off of the bike so far and now I'm just sanding it down. It is the next day because that has taken a long time. I've been sanding and these parts right here I just want to smooth down before we prime the bike. All of this, you can see where it's like matte to shiny. I just want to get all the shiny off. Uh, yesterday I also went to the bike shop to get a crank puller so I can take my pedals off. I told them I was painting my bike and they basically said, because I also wanted to get a chain puller, so I could basically have just a naked frame, which is how I see most people paint their bikes. Um, but the bike shop said that buying an entirely new chain was cheaper than the mechanism to pull my chain. So before I even bought the new chain, they also said it's pretty easy to paint your bike and keep your chain on. So that's what I'm going to do. It just won't look aesthetic. So I have my crank puller. That was $16. And they gave me reflectors for free. And they're pretty cool reflectors, like modern, circle. So that's pretty cool. But before we get ahead of ourselves, there's still a lot more sanding to do. So I'm gonna sand the bike while it's still with wheels on, and then do the last little bit with wheels off. Oh, where the paint has worn off my front rim. So see where it's like all scratched and stuff? That might be harder to see. I'm just going to sand everything to make it all smooth and then just repaint it black so it looks like the back rim. This might seem really tedious, but you can see now it's much more clear which parts of my bike are rusting. And all of this exposed metal is risk for rust. Like I've been sanding some of this, but I didn't realize that my bike was this kind of banged up. I mean, I did, but see, water is definitely getting into the bike. A, a fresh paint job every, you know, seven years doesn't seem too bad. I'm covered in sweat, but now I'm gonna rinse off my bike, see what is left, get all this dust off of it. It is a hot day, so I'm not worried about getting my bike wet. It's gonna dry pretty quickly.
So here's the only part of the video where I'm going to do voiceover. This is me taking off my cranks, the system that control the pedals. So this crank puller is pretty simple. It can only do its job. So if you've never used one before, like me, you can figure it out pretty easily. Essentially, it screws in, pops off the bolt, then you screw it back in to get off the cranks. I took the liberty to cut out most of this footage, but it's pretty simple. It took me like an hour, but now I know how to do it, and I was able to reassemble my bike when all of this was said and done. So don't be too intimidated, but also like, it was tricky. <laughs> Now that I got the back tire and the pedals off, this is what I mean about the chain breaker. If I could break the chain, I could take it off completely, but I'm just gonna push it out of the way, like gently pushing bangs off of someone's forehead. Let's get rid of the grips. Oh baby, it is full sun. Here's the grip. And to keep this from caving in. I mean, eventually it will, but you can keep it for a few years. If you put a nickel inside. Okay, so I took a little bit of a break because it was hot as heck earlier. Now it's around two o'clock, so the sun isn't like crazy. So I am just going to sand down my petals and it should be pretty easy to paint these today. So I'm gonna do that right now. Anywhere there's exposed metal just means that it's kind of dinged up. So I just want to smooth that over so when we paint it, it looks nice and fresh and we didn't waste any of our hard work. Especially is mad dinged up, so good chance to have this off your bike and just clean it up. Now that these are dry for the most part, I'm just taking a cloth to make sure they're totally dry. And then I'm gonna tape them off. And then we can paint them. I'm for some action, baby. So I'm using gloss black. You can see it above the barcode. If you're asking why did I strip it black to paint it black again, well, black is in the color scheme and we want everything to be fresh and rust resistant, etc, etc. And I think it'll look really cool glossy black. It's not, it's not hard, hard to take off your tire, tire, but I might just try and tape it anyway, um, because this tire is a little sensitive. how I've sectioned off my bike. I have a lot of these bags that I've been holding on to like forever. It's a lot easier to mark things off and I can reuse them. It's a lot less tedious than tape. So I taped off my seat, my handlebars, the brakes, these little nubbins I've left because I'm gonna hand paint them, I believe, and it'll be easier to come in with them especially if they're white. And my chain, I've just put in this bag, like a little, you know, you know what it looks like. After all of that work, we're painting it white again. So this is a primer. So we are going to paint and prime this bad boy. I'm gonna do coats. So I'm gonna go pretty light with everything. And that way I'll be able to move the chain around as well. So 
doing an update. It's like two hours later and putting on the second coat. Hey John. So it has been raining pretty badly for the last couple of days so we took a little break in the process. I have been sanding and repainting my bike in between steps but today we're going to finish the wheels and the wheels are going to be AT field inspired. This is just from my crazy brainchild idea so that's not the right phrasing. So this might not work but the idea is I have sprayed the outside of my wheel black and then I'm going to feather in orange to like come out to the edge. So this is gloss Tuscan Sun. This is given to me as a gift. All right, AT. The AT field is kind of more orange, but I think that this looks cool. We'll do both wheels. I think it looks good. Kind of exactly what I was looking for, but I will have to touch up the black as this yellow was pretty dusty. Hey everybody. So it's rained for like a week now. So pacing on the bike has been pretty slow. But today I want to at least get a lot done. So I have my references and I have all of my paint colors, which has been the hardest thing to do, is find purple in the city of Philadelphia. So whatever you guys are painting purple, I used all the purple. So you can see here that I primed and then sanded, primed, sanded, primed, sanded. And I'm kind of at a point where I would need some sort of filler to fill some of these things after priming and sanding them so much. You can see down here it's a little bit smoother from my efforts, but we're just gonna move on. <laughs> we're just gonna move on. So while waiting, waiting for my bike to dry, let's talk about my basket. So I got this little bell basket and uh, this bike in the picture kind of even looks like mine. You can see that this is just like raw wood. Like there's even some, ugh, I think an Amazon reviewer would be upset about that. So this is just dead up raw wood. So I figured we would seal this wood um, and the thing about this is these are just regular S screws. So I'm going to unscrew these, paint them, and then reinstall them the other way around so we don't have this bell logo. So I have some Minwax, just some clear polyurethane. This is what I use to paint my desk upstairs. So I'm just gonna go over this balsa wood really quick just if I'm ever out in the rain or anything like that. She's a little scuffed. Like this is probably my only opportunity to paint it. One thing at a time. So here are the colors we are working with. Um, French lilac, rusto purple. This is just spring green and golden sunset. And I got this clear gloss um, just to give everything a coat at the end, but also this will make everything the same finish because this I could only find in satin, so we'll see if we need to use this. So not to be annoying, but I have my Eva figure right here, so we're going to kind of go off of that. Here's the lilac, here's the purple, and this looks like it's not the right green, but we tested it in store and it kind of is, so let's see what we'll do now. Get a feel for what I'm doing. I'm literally just like holding him as if he were the bike.
There, see that? How it's like kind of chunky. I'll have to sand that down and redo it. Ew! Most of the body, my dark purple. And then I can go in and detail with other colors. So the purple would be the base. I do want black along here. And I am running out of black, but it should be okay. Really, I should sand this, but... I haven't had my bike for like a week and I kind of just like need my bike back. Boy, I don't know if you can see that, but see how the paint is like curdling? This isn't from the texture of the bike. Maybe this is from being in the direct sun. I can really see it on this side. It's like curdling almost. I'm gonna have to sand all of that too. And down here, it's not showing up gloss. It's showing up matte which I think is probably I didn't shake the can long enough. My new grips, my new handlebars, and I keep walking past them and thinking that they're hot dogs because I have hot dogs in the freezer that look just like them. And I keep walking past like, huh, huh. Right, honey? I keep thinking they're hot dogs. I really love this yellow warning pattern at the top of our reference picture. So I'm just creating a stencil out of cardboard so I can spray paint that directly on the bike. Mm, perfect. So, since it's so windy out and I'm having a really hard time avoiding overspray, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna section this part out and paint it with a paintbrush. Into my lid a little bit. Spot where there was overspray, I just sanded down and I'll just keep sanding and touching it up until it looks good. Everybody, hopefully today is our last day working on the bike because it is supposed to start raining again until next week, but we are pretty far along, so hopefully today we're done. It's crazy, but after sanding and stuff like that and peeling off tape and sanding and repainting, my bike looks like this, so I'm gonna take all the paper off and stuff and see what we have. Here is my template, and I wanna put that here. This yellow has given me the most problems, but we'll see. All right, Banksy, I see you. I wish it was cleaner, but I guess that's just what it's gonna look like. You're wondering why I left so much of the bike white? Um, I don't really know. And now I think the best thing to do would be have like a stripe of black and then a stripe of green and maybe just finish it off purple. So I painted two stripes on my front basket. My little wood pieces are finished and painted. And then for funsies, I painted the hardware
so 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 much for hanging out with me today while I painted my bike. It was not as easy as I thought and I thought that it kind of looked like amateur and weird but now I really 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 like it. It reminds me of something like high design like Lego. I don't know, it's super cool. I have another bike in my basement that no one rides if you want me to paint another anime bike i totally can i had a lot a lot of fun so let me know what you guys think and if you like videos like these no one may watch this but this is kind of like what my personal life is all about so i'm really excited i have wanted to paint my bike like eva one like for two years so i'm so glad i just finally did it say yes to life and you too can have an anime bike Anyway, I love you guys so, so, so much. Subscribe if it's your first time here. And leave this video a like. I love you. And until next time, bye. To see more photos of my bike, make sure you follow me on Instagram at quietcoolkid, where I will have all the beautiful cinematic shots. And I will have my bike at least out in the world.